if you want to say that you're present, um, and I'll see if I can actually, I'm not going to force with the setting right now. All right, uh, let's get started. Um, I have a couple administrative things to say. Um, um, one of you asked, um, is having problems setting up um, the Lab 4 on a Mac? I'm wondering if there are other people that have had those problems and have solved them. Unfortunately, I don't have a Mac, so I can't um, get down into those issues. Anybody got lab for set up on the Mac? Not so much. All right. Well, um, what I'm going to do is I'll set up a, a forum for the Mac folks to support each other. Um, and I'm hoping one of you figured out how to do it and you can tell the others. Um, usually that's what has happened in the past classes. So let's hope this works um, this year as well. Um, okay, so today we'll go over uh, the MPLS assignment, which will be optional, um, meaning that if you did the other ones and you're happy with your grades, great. Um, if you um, want to improve a grade on your previous assignment, you can do MPLS. Um, that'd be awesome, the only one, um, I guess I, I do want everybody to do the RDT assignment. So if you don't want to do any of the other ones and you want to do MPLS instead, that's great. But I want the RDT still submitted. Um, so I will also post that on D2L. All right. Um, any other questions, issues, anything that comes up for you guys? Uh, I have a question, Dr. Winnie. Yep. Um, when should we expect um, some more grading to come out for assignments? So it doesn't look like the last yeah. two assignments have been graded and today. Yeah, um, unfortunately, our TA um, got COVID, so that may be we may be a bit delayed on that. I think he was feeling all right, but I will follow up with him today and check where he's at. Um, so that's a good okay. question. Anybody else? Great, okay. Okay. Just show my screen. Perfect. All right. Uh, I hope this is big enough for you guys. If not, let me know. So, um, all right. So MPLS, which is the last programming assignment, um, 
it's basically about MPLS forwarding and about priority forwarding. We're not going to get to the priority stuff until uh, we talk about quality of service, which will be next week. So you can kind of hold off on, on the implementation of the third part until we talk about that, some of the priority stuff. Um, or waited for queuing isn't going to make sense just yet. Um, or the solutions aren't going to make sense, but I can talk about the problems. Okay. So um, this will be about MPLS forwarding. It has a fairly similar setup to your previous assignments with the network layer, data link layer, and the simulation that py running the code. Um, we're going to start with this simple two router network as before. Okay. There's a um, a link to a video lecture I recorded last year, which explains this assignment. If uh, you want to look at it and get some more details, uh, maybe there's more details there, or kind of a different presentation of the material. Um, the one kind of big change in the in the implementation is that at the link layer, um, we are going to actually uh, take more time to transmit packets, or uh, basically. Forwarding is not instantaneous. Forwarding depends on the size of the packet and the speed of the link, the speed of the interface. Okay. So um, based on that, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of cheesing the way it does it. It's basically making it seem like a really slow, net, slow network, but uh, to count, to make kind of the forwarding delay visible, um, packets are delayed and the simulation time is longer. It's about 10 seconds to kind of give the network time to actually transmit the packets. Yeah, so that's kind of one um, change of the link layer. Okay. So um, as far as um, what you guys need to do is to um, implement first MPLS forwarding. So on these links, um, we're going to send an IP packet uh, we're going to take an IP packet, we're going to put it in an Ethernet frame or a link layer frame that's going to get transmitted. And at this router, the I, you will extract the IP packet or the network packet from the network frame, encapsulate it in a PLS, and then forward it uh, to the next router inside an Ethernet frame. And on that router, that MPLS packet will be decapsulated, and then you'll forward the IP packet that wasn't closed in the MPL MPLS frame onto the host. Okay. So we're encapsulating an MPLS here and decapsulating an MPLS here and then forwarding just the network packet to the host. All right. So to do this encapsulation, um, you will create an MPLS packet, which basically looks like this. It has a label, uh, experimental bits, uh, a stack bit, and time to live. In practice, I believe for this assignment, all you really need is the label. So um, I'm okay with you guys just using that and ignoring those other bits. That's fine for this assignment. And then here's where the MPLS header sits between the Ethernet header and the IP header, as we discussed on the slides. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we're going to have a, um, uh, an Ethernet frame in, as link frame um, implemented in link.py, and then an IP packet as network packet in network.py. Okay, so the link frame can carry either an MPLS frame holding an, a network packet or, or a network packet directly. Okay. So the link frame will have a type S field to allow the router to figure out what is being carried inside the link layer frame. That's pretty much how Ethernet works, so no surprise there. Okay. So you guys will implement the MPLS frame to encapsulate network packets. Um, as I said, this encapsulation will take place on the first hub router. Um, according to the table defined in encapsulation table dictionary, okay? it's a parameter that gets set to router. So if we look at the code um, inside the simulation, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. is this too small? Yes, it is too small. It's Thank you. Small. It's pretty small. Great. Thank you, guys. Uh,
Okay. Um, what was I saying? I was saying, um, oh yeah, the encapsulation rules. So when you when you guys define a router, okay, you'll see there are two. Um, there are these encapsulation frames, the forwarding table, and the decapsulation table. Okay, so the encapsulation frame will tell you which packets to encapsulate in MTLS and how. Okay, the forwarding table basically does forwarding of MPLS frames, and the decapsulation table will uh, tell the router to take an MPLS frame and under what conditions to decapsulate it and then what to do with the IP packet. Okay, so those are the things you guys will need to define. Um, I'm leaving them undefined for you. It's for you to figure out what information should be in those tables and how they should work. Okay, so that's kind of the I guess the extra challenge of this assignment over what we've done before is I'm intentionally underdefining what should be in these tables and how they should work. Um, that's kind of for you to, to suss out based on the lectures and based on the experience you've had from the previous programming assignments. Okay, you also notice that um, the interface uh, has a the interface list. We have two interfaces, we'll have a set of capacities uh, for forwarding and so, from that, you can see that the kind of forwarding rate on router B is smaller on the outgoing link to the um, to uh, host two. Okay, so um, so you have the encapsulation table, which tells this router what to do with an IP packet, under what conditions to encapsulate it, and which interface to forward it on. Okay. Then the second part is to implement the forwarding table, which is like the MPLS tables we discussed, where based on you know maybe some incoming interface, maybe on, based on definitely based on some label, you make a forwarding decision onto another interface, possibly rewriting the label um, of the MPLS packet. Okay, uh, and then uh, in the router in process queues and router process MPLS frame, you'll need to make changes to implement this. MPLS forwarding. Okay. And then the final part of MPLS forwarding is to, do, is to do the decapsulation based on the rules you define in the decapsulation table. Okay. So when an MPLS packet arrives at router B, the router B needs to now uh, figure out that it should look into the decapsulation table, make a decapsulation decision, and then forward the decapsulated packet onto host two. Okay, questions about that part? So far, so good. All right. Okay, so in part two, um, you will take the implementation that you have and get it to work in a bigger network. Okay, so um, we have host one and host two and host three. Um, okay, and then just as in the previous assignment, you'll need to forward data from host one and host two onto different paths. Okay, and um, you should be able to do the forwarding onto different paths um, just by setting different rules in the um, encapsulation table, forwarding table, and decapsulation table. And so that should all be controlled inside the simulation. There should be no more changes in the code required. This is kind of the proof in the pudding of your implementation in part one. Okay. Um, so then finally for part three, um, we will take advantage of the fact that IP headers in general have a type of service, which I guess we'll talk about next week. Um, and we want to forward packets at a particular priority. So as I mentioned in the simulation, there is a constraint capacity link uh, on one of the routers. Okay. And what we're also doing here is when we're sending the traffic, okay, is that when I'm calling UDT send, there's this extra parameter called priority. And you can basically assign priority to different packets. We're going to treat the fact that higher numbers have higher priority. We'll treat it like that. Okay. And so here I'm basically sending five packets and I am um, alternating the priority of them. 
right? So the packets get sent, every other packet has different priority. And so what, what we want to do is that as these packets uh, get queued on this bottleneck interface here, okay, we would like the high priority packets to be forwarded first out of this queue and the low priority packets to be forwarded after there are no more high priority packets queued. And do you want for the priority there to be just like a set amount of priorities or is it like if it's a bigger number, it's always the highest priority and just so it's just like a greater than kind of situation? Just a greater than. Yeah. Um, we're working with priorities one and zero, uh, but, but I mean, you know, you can set whatever you want to, but one and zero is fine. Um, hey, we're just treating one as higher or higher numbers as higher priority. Okay. So the tricky part here is that, um, let me see, uh, actually, maybe I'm ahead of myself. Um, okay, so there's a bottleneck in, on router B in the network one or problem one. Um, okay, so what you guys are supposed to do is implement a similar bottleneck in this network. Okay. Um, and then change the program to show how many packets of each priority are queued at each router. Okay. So we want to be able to, if packets queued up on this router or in any router, we want to know what is in the queue and, and at what priority. All right. This is for inspection, so you guys can kind of uh, you know, see a queue and see how it changes from the output of your program. All right. Then you'll implement strict priority forwarding. Okay. Um, and the challenge here is that in 2B, uh, or maybe I should say 3B, I'll update this. Okay. Um, you can do this output by kind of cheating and looking uh, at the network packet priority. And so even though the routers are forwarding MPLS frames, you can you know break those packets open and see what is the priority of, of the of the um, IP packets inside the MPLS frames. Okay. The challenge is that MPLS don't MPLS headers don't carry priority. Okay. And I don't want you guys to extend those to, to carry priority that's included in the IP packets. Okay. So what you will need to do is to um, devise a different method of having the higher priority packets be forwarded first, okay, without implementing priority field in MPLS because it doesn't have one, and without peeking inside the MPLS frames at the network packets to see what their priority is during the forwarding process, okay? So basically what I'm asking is to find a way to uh, uh, have the routers do forwarding like they do normally just based on MPLS uh, uh, labels, right? But have that forwarding still observe somehow the priority of enclosed IP packets without looking at those packets during the forwarding process. You may look at those during the encapsulation process but not afterwards. Um, and that's it. That's, that's the assignment. There are two bonus problems. One is to implement uh, weighted for queuing, which we'll talk about next week. Uh, and the other one is to implement an SDN type controller uh, to set the forwarding tables automatically in your simulation. Obviously those are, this one is probably fairly easy. This one is probably fairly hard. Okay, um, let me see, what else can I tell you about the code? So inside uh, the link layer, we have a link frame, right? Which has a type field. This will either be MPLS or network. Okay. So that's the sort of ethernet frame, so to speak. Okay, and then during forwarding, okay, um, we're going to assume that, a that each character is 8 bits, okay? So we can compute packet size from the length of the string that you're forwarding, okay? 
And then you can compute the next interface available time, which is basically how long it takes to transmit all the bits in the packets given the interface capacity, which you configured in simulation PY. Um, those are, I think, the, I think are the major changes in this. Okay, so if you end up running it, we'll end up getting something like this. I'll kind of scroll up here so you can see what's happening. So first we're creating the network, okay? Um, and the, the host one, as we indicated in this loop, okay, is sending the packets, okay? And as you can see, the priorities are alternating here, okay? So then from the link layer, we get the transmission from host one to uh, router A, okay? And it's transmitting that first frame, okay? And it says seconds until next available time, okay? And Q size four, okay? So there's the Q size on the interface, Okay, and this is the time at which the interface will finish transmitting that packet and we'll be able to transmit the next packet. Okay. Um, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you're kind of getting all this output and then eventually uh, host two ends up getting the packets. Okay, questions? Buddy, you guys good? Seems like a pretty straightforward presentation. Um, again, as I said, this is optional. So um, I think that fun part of this assignment is, uh, well, I think it's kind of fun to figure out how to do the decapsulation encapsulation. And then once you implement part one, uh, setting up this network and having everything just run is pretty rewarding. And then trying to figure out how to do uh, priorities just using MPLS labels is also kind of a fun thing. So, um, hope you guys enjoy it. All right. Um, anything else that comes up for you guys? Otherwise, you can end this early. I just wanted to say that I can't speak for everyone else, but um, networking programming can be very difficult. But yeah, I find it extremely rewarding. Yay! <laughs> when, it, when it works, it just. That's, Can I just say, I that's really why I to... like it too. <laughs> yeah, Jason, well, I don't like general oh, programming, yeah. but I like programming networks. I like doing this sort of stuff. Which is I... helpful for me because normally programming programming is a kind of a chore. This isn't. Yay! That's awesome. I mean, I get a tremendous amount of satisfaction when I have a, a, a distributed system working. Like, there's something extra satisfying from having multiple nodes, like, not trip over each other. So, uh, I think it also kind of forces people that go through networks or go through eventually distributed system to, to think very differently about what's going on in their code, um, which is really, honestly, the primary thing I want you guys to do is to think in a in a in a in a protocol way and in a distributed way that's really what you're getting so glad you like it jason did you have something to say too yeah i was gonna say um i i admit i'm not a huge fan of python uh and uh, a lot of my struggles have come down to python <laughs> i've had I, I had one issue with program two that it, for some reason i had no idea about the indentation on certain so when i was trying to do a while loop and um i was trying to receive certain data we'll go to super details but you have to indent it five times apparently and i'd never heard of this before i spent like three hours trying to debug that so i was just uh, kind of curious i know you were trying to do um like go as a part of this um uh, where are you thinking about kind of evolving towards that later on or is that are we going to kind of stick around with python um just out of curiosity um i'm, I'm thinking about it what i what i want to do um is combine all the assignments into kind of more unified code 
So we have these different network layers that we add. I kind of want to just join it all into one big network simulator and then have you guys actually implement RDT in, in this setup as well. Because then you can have RDT in all the other assignments too. Um, can kind of build on top of them. I don't know. So that will be a kind of a heavy redesign. And so when I'm doing that, I'm, I'm considering moving this to Go. The problem is that that would require many of you to learn another programming language that you haven't seen, right? I, I think most people have seen Python in, I mean, when was the last time you guys used Python? 107, 127? Uh, 127 for me, but I know some other people actually really enjoy Python. <laughs> so I, I do know I'm, I'm speaking from the minority here. I, I get it, but I don't know what it is about Python, but I, I just, it's not, not my thing. It's not your thing. So I, Python has real limitations. Um, I, I think it does. I think it's really also very clear. Um, Java gets pretty verbose. Um, I mean, we could do this in C++, but I've seen too many people cry in my office in 366 over this. So I don't know if that's what you guys really want. Um, C++ I, was interesting, I, I got to admit. I enjoyed it because it was kind of cool to see it, but I, I will admit there were definitely some struggles with that. There's definitely struggles with that. Um, I So anyway, I, I would like to... Uh, thanks, thanks, Jeremiah. I'd like C plus plus too. I think that'd be, I think that'd be pretty cool. But it it does get, you know, it does get hard. I think in Python, this is fairly small code base that works pretty well. Um, I think Go would be lovely, but I'm I'm a little bit worried about making people learn Go while they're learning to do everything else. Um, Joe, you you Joe actually took on re-implementing everything in. In Go, how are how 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 are you feeling about that? Um, I mean, I love Go. It's what I use <clears throat> primarily for everything else. So I think it's really powerful. It's like, you know, it's not quite as tedious or verbose as Java, but <clears throat> you know, has really powerful sort of standard library stuff for sockets and network stuff. So, right. but I mean, I, I came from a place where I'd already used Go. You know a decent amount, so the learning curve wasn't really there i mean i hadn't implemented a tcp socket from the ground up before but i mean i at least knew where to search for it and how to like read the standard libraries and stuff like that so right. I, mean, I, I really liked it i yeah i'd rather do it in go than python for sure <laughs> so i'll think about it maybe i'll change it to go i'll, I'll, I'll need to like rejuggle some of the uh some of the lectures to, to give you guys more time, but I think it could be, I think it could be done. I think it'd be interesting. If you really want to make twice as much work for yourself, you could just have it have them have the choice of implementing it C plus plus Go or Python. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really say that. I don't know. I for me, it really just comes down to the fact that the only language that I have any significant experience with before this class was C++. Uh -huh. uh, so now I'm learning both C and Python. So right. I tell you, I don't know. Well, if we wanted to go to C++, there's a number of like pretty great network simulators that are already built, um, but they're much more complex than the simulator I built for you guys. Um, so I think that'd be interesting, but I think that'd be much harder for you guys to work within the framework like that. Um, anyway, so I'll either keep it in Python or move it to Go. I'll, I'll see. Yeah, I, I do uh, think it is fun. And Python, it, it's not too bad. There's, it's just like, I don't know what it is about it, but the things that annoy me annoy me a lot. The things that it works well in, it's, it's fine, but it's just the, yeah. Um, I, you know, every language has problems. Those things that just, oh, it's just, for me, it's those indentations. It's the indentation. I want to use brackets. <laughs> the good thing yeah. about glue is brackets are optional. 
<laughs> you can use brackets and indentation. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, you know, th there's a possibility that uh, there's a chance that 366 will move into Go. I don't think it's going to happen, but if it does, then Go would be an obvious choice for this class as well. So we'll see. All right, any other questions, comments? Anybody else? Great. Well, thank you guys. Enjoy the extra 20 minutes. Awesome. Thanks for everything. All right. Yep. Bye bye.